Hey guys, welcome to Workflow My Workload. I am your guy, Justin Razio, and today I'm gonna to show you how to build a report within Smartsheet correctly. Now, some of you have probably seen the report feature. Maybe you messed around with, a little, with it a little bit. Maybe once you've gotten into it, you've shied away from it, didn't care for the filters, this and that. Well, today I'm gonna to give you full confidence in building that report out correctly. Let's dive right into it. All right, now reports can be used for a lot of different things. The main feature of reports is you can take multiple sheets and consolidate them so you can see the exact data that you wanna see. Now in reports, you can filter out multiple different things, even multiple different things all at the same time. So you can get very specific. And I'm also gonna show you what the report looks like in a dashboard and how that changes some things based on the viewer that is looking at it. And if you haven't yet already, more than anything else, please sign up for that free online course that I've created for you guys. It's absolutely free, 45 minutes of just raw Smartsheet content. And I go over everything that people ask me about more than anything else. All right, let's dive right into it. All right, the first place we're gonna go to is the plus symbol right here in the ribbon on the left. And then we're gonna click here in report, because this is what we're gonna be creating today. Now you get the option to pull a report from sheets that are pulling data from the rows or pulling it from the sheet summary. And I'm gonna build both of them for you today so you can see which each one of those will look like. Most of the time, you're gonna be doing the row report. Now let's go ahead and give our report a name. We'll just say Lemonade Franchise Report. Leave it on Row Report. Click OK. Now it's gonna ask us to pull some sheets in. And you can do this by choosing the entire folder and all the sheets that are in the folder, or you can go ahead and do the drop down tree and choose each one that you would like. And if you're having a hard time finding what you're wanting to pull, you can also start typing it in at the top here. And there's all three that I would like. And depending on your plan, you can choose multiple sheets at once. I'll choose those three, one for California, Oregon, and Washington. Now the next thing it's gonna do is it's going to ask you to build out, um, the, to show all the columns that you would like built out into your report. And it automatically gave me all the names of all the columns that it found in all the, on all three sheets that we have chosen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start clicking these in. And if you notice here, it does it alphabetically. And if you don't like the order in which they're going, just like in a sheet, you can drag and drop these columns wherever you would like them to be. So I just chose all of them. The next thing it's gonna do is it's gonna ask you to filter. But I'm not gonna filter just yet. I'm gonna rearrange my rows first. So. I don't really need the sheet name, so we'll get rid of that. And I do want my primary to be first. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I like those together. I have nothing in the comments section, so let's turn the comments off as well. I don't need created or created by. Don't need to know if it's done don't need the modified date or modified by and that looks good right there perfect all right so now it's showing everything here from all three sheets I'm going to go and click Save and in case you're wondering what those sheets look like I'll show you what they are really fast so let's go ahead and do so here was the Mike's Lemonade stand franchise for Washington and then we'll go ahead and do the one for California 
and the data, the colors are the same, but the, the actual data itself, these numbers are different in each sheet along with the dates and the statuses and those whom it is assigned to. And let's do or again. So just wanted to show you that that's what this is what all three sheets look like. Let's go back to the report. And you'll know it's a report when it's a yellow, it looks like a little uh, binder, a yellow binder. That's when it's that's when you know it's a report. Blue is a sheet and green is a dashboard. All right, back to our report here. So now we're having we're showing everything here. So we don't have any filters yet. And when you want to create a filter, just click on filter criteria. And then you're going to select the field. Let's say I just want to see, maybe I just want to see all of them that are for Justin. So, and the Justin is in the column called assigned to. So I'm going to go ahead and choose assigned to. And I want it to be is equal to Justin Orazio. I'm going to click OK. And as soon as I do, it's automatically going to filter and only show me the rows where Justin is in the assigned to column. And there they are. And I can make this the opposite where it does not contain Justin Orazio. So I'll do that. Justin Orazio. So it's going to show every one of the rows that does not have Justin Orazio in it. So I'll go back to just Justin Orazio. Okay, and then you can group them. And so maybe I want to group it by status. So let's say we'll click status. And for status, I have completed, not started, or in progress. And you can sort ascending or descending. That's going to be alphabetical. Click OK. So it groups all the completed ones, groups all the ones in progress, and groups all the ones not yet started. But let's say I want to change it up. Maybe I want to group it by date. Let's do due date. You can sort or oldest to newest or newest, newest to oldest. And there we go. Another way to do this, maybe you want it to do it per month. You would actually do that through the filter. So let's go ahead and change the grouping. And we'll do it by status. A little more cleaner, and maybe we want to do a sign to is equal to Justin Razio, and we only want to show the ones that are for the month of let's just say September. And it looks like only one of them should appear if that's the case. All the rest of these due dates are in October. So if you want to add two filters combined, I'm just going to click Add Condition. You see this and here, you can change it to or or and. So I want it to show just my name, and I only want to show it just for September. So let's do, let's see here. And there is September, just the one for September. Now, if you change the filter, and this happens sometimes to folks, where they accidentally click or, then it's only going to show Justin Razio or that. And what happens when you click OK is it looks like it doesn't do anything. And you're like, hey, how come my filter isn't working? That's just because the and and or got clicked by accident. And you can also group filters. So 
So you want to have not just add a condition, but you want to add a whole new grouping filter. So you can keep this in itself and you can add one that connects to all of them and you can change it to or and. But just know that the more filters you add, um, the more specific it gets and you're going to see less and less things. And you don't want to get too crazy with your filters. Um, something that's easy enough to turn on and off very quickly, especially when you're giving presentations. Okay, so done with the filters there. Now the next thing, this is really cool, is you can also summarize. So maybe you want to see how many times Justin has a row, um, has a has a franchise, how many times Susan is used, how many times Bob is used. So you're just going to click the next one here called Summarize. And let's do Assign to. And we're just going to do Account. That's the only one that's available for this. So see, it's going to count. So all the ones. So see, it's actually doing it per status. So let's change it because it's grouped per status. So right now it's counting per status. So there's six that have not been started, seven that are in progress, and five that are complete. So let's change it from the group. So let's not group it by status, but let's group it by assign to. Click OK. See, now it's doing the count by the assigned two. There's 11 for Justin Orazio. There's only two for Susan, one for Smith, four for Bob. And then it gives you the total at the very top. And then you can also sort as well. This doesn't do a whole lot. It does a little bit, but not much. Move some stuff up and down. Sometimes it doesn't even, like it just did, doesn't do anything. But that is how you create a report within Smartsheet. And you don't have to have sorting on, you don't have to have summarizing on. If you want to turn any of these off, just click the X right here to the right. Click OK. Same with the grouping. You can turn, turn that off as well. Also, one thing to keep in mind in grouping is this little guy right here. So if we, uh, let's go back to grouping again by assign to. In grouping, if you turn this on, it summarizes everything and takes out the uh, the bottom feature here. So watch this. It just summarizes everything. So it's just boom, 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 boom. Keeps it real nice and neat. Maybe we want to do a count for assign to. I'll show you what this looks like here. And it just puts the number right here. So it's a lot cleaner. It doesn't give you all that extra stuff. And this is, and if you still want to drill down, you can do it per person as well. All right. That is how you create a report in Smartsheet. Now, let's look at how to take this report and let's drop it into a dashboard and see what that looks like. So we know this is our name, Lemonade Franchise Report. We wanna remember that. Let's go into our dashboard. Let's go ahead and click Edit. Edit Dashboard. Go edit again, I wanna add widget. Now let's choose the report function. Drops it down at the bottom. First thing we're going to do is we're going to find the report that we just created. So we're going to click Add Report. We're going to go ahead and look for it. Aha, here it is right here. Again, we know it's a report because it's an orange binder. Limited Franchise Report. It just throws it in there right there for us. Look at that. Make us a little bigger. And see how it's pretty spread up, spread out, and you want it to be a lot, a lot tighter. What we can do is let's go ahead and click Widget Behavior, and this is deciding what happens when you actually click on the widget itself. When you click on this report widget, so we're going to go ahead and click the drop down, or we're going to click Open to the data source. In other words, when you click on this widget report, it takes you right into the report that we just created. Let's click save. Let's click into it. Let's open this up again. And there's a lot of excess room that we don't need. So let's go ahead and tighten these up. And you can actually click on one column, hold the shift key, click right on the arrows. And whatever you lower it to, it'll do it for all three of those like that. Let's 
click save. Let's go back to our port here. And let's go ahead, click edit. And now we can make this a little tighter. We don't need it so crazy anymore. Whoa, sorry there. Scroll button got away from me. All right. So let's go ahead and do a few more things to this. Click on the three dots here, click edit. All right, so the first thing we have the option for is we can remove the formatting. So when you click that, it takes away all the colors. And if you have a Gantt chart with any report, it will only, first off, your report will only have a Gantt chart if some of the sheets already have Gantt charts within them. And uh, that won't make any difference because there's no Gantt charts in this one. And you can also do the same thing as we did before where you can remove the group. You can collapse the grouping. And then just like any other widget, we can go ahead and change it up here with the title. And which behavior we already looked at. The other option just to show you is you can, when someone clicks on the report widget, it will take them to any URL site. So it can take them anywhere on the web or to another Smartsheet item. And the last one doesn't do anything if you pick that option. And the final one here is something new that Smartsheet came out with. And this will be the last thing for today. Is it's called viewer mode. And when you click on viewer mode, it will give you the option where you decide um, what the person is going to see, whoever looks at this report widget on the dashboard. Or the only other option you can choose is they can look at it from their own perspective. In other words, if they make viewer changes to this on their own, then they leave the dashboard and then come back later, they're still going to see the viewer changes that they've made. But if you choose this, this one right here, last widget editor, then whatever edits you make, that's what they're going to see. Even if they leave the dashboard and come back, they're going to see the changes of the perspective that you have made, not what they want to see. So I always like to keep it as last widget editor. That way, if someone like, hey, you know, I really want to see it in this view, then I'll change it for them. Um, I'll only choose this option, their own perspective, if I really trust the person that they know what they're doing within Smartsheet. All right, that is it. Oh, I apologize. There is one last thing. I wanted to show you guys the difference between a row report and a summary report really fast. The only difference for that is obviously these are rows. And over here to the right, we have what's called a summary. And if you have and I have another lesson for this, but you can add cells in the summary sheet as well. A lot of times people use it to sum up um, children rows. So for instance, like you can have the profit right here that adds up for north side, profit for the east side, profit for south side, and profit for west side. And you can have those four cells, north side, east side, south side, and west side. And it will just, the summary report, when you're creating a summary report, like a sheet summary report will only pull from that summary panel that we were just looking at right here and it just builds a report off that way again most of the time you're building a report it's just going to be off the rows all right you guys that is it for this lesson and uh, again please sign up for that free lesson i've created for you guys and i will see you in the next episode all right you guys take care and god bless